Hey, good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us on After GMS. Thanks for logging on and starting to connect with us. We've got some great conversations coming up. I'll introduce Taran Kirksey. He's working from home. I'm Tracy McCain here in the studio. And Taran, yesterday was sweltering. Okay, it was just hot everywhere. But today, a little bit of relief, you think? Yeah, yeah, just a, a tad bit. Okay. Our, the humidity is down a little bit, but we will take whatever relief we can get. And as we go through the day today, high temperatures will end up in the mid to upper 80s with a mix of sun and clouds and a couple of pop-up showers and storms. Uh, the chance of rain at your house today, right around 20 to 30 percent. We'll keep it at that level for Tuesday. And then the rain chances look to be highest this week, Wednesday and Thursday as a cold front moves on in before the rain chances taper off. After that, with temperatures falling down to the 70s and low 80s, for highs as we head on into next weekend. Let's quick look at your seven day forecast. All right, from the forecast, we'll get to your headlines this morning. Protests in the wake of George Floyd's death continued for another weekend. Take a look at LaBauer Park in downtown Greensboro yesterday afternoon. The crowd gathered at the park before marching through the streets and what organizers say is the largest protest yet. The group called for justice, equality, and an end to police brutality. Another group of protesters shut down parts of I-40 and Wendover Avenue yesterday. The group linked arm in arm and walked into the roadways. Some shops along Wendover Avenue closed early as a precaution after protesters brought their messages inside of stores. Greensboro police say at 8 o'clock last night, the group was reminded of the city curfew and the protest peacefully ended. No arrests were made. Another large crowd came together in High Point yesterday afternoon calling for change. Protesters and police officers walked side by side, showing a commitment to working together. It is a message the High Point Police Chief hopes travels across the nation. So the protests have sparked important conversations across the nation about topics, including relations about race and police brutality. Well, those conversations are also happening here at home. Today, I'm hosting a virtual roundtable with several community leaders, Representative Mark Walker, Greensboro Mayor Nancy Vaughn, Police Chief Brian James, and Pastor Dion Clark. So right now, I want to know what questions you want answered. Leave them below in our Facebook live stream and we will make sure that we write them down and jot them down because this conversation happening at 11 this morning. And then of course we'll air it tomorrow morning on the Good Morning Show and some of it tonight in our evening newscast. So I know Taran, you've started the conversation uh, in a safe space with friends um, who you've been able to share and kind of get some communication and understanding between the two of you. H how has that helped you, do you think? Um, I think uh, it just helps everyone get a different perspective because if you really think about it we're all shaped by our experiences and so our experiences shape the way we view the world so everyone is looking at and approaching the world differently and that means that we may not see eye to eye on things because we may not see it from the other person's perspective but if we actually have a conversation and talk to them about hey well you know, what do you think about this? Or why do you feel this way about this, that, or the other? Maybe you can get some connections. And people have to be open-minded and open-hearted is uh, probably the best way of uh, saying it, to accepting the other person's point of view as long as the starting point is I respect you as a human being to start. And once that is there, then you can kind of build on top of that. Okay, well, I may not agree with you on this or on that, but I do respect your point of view. But again, it all starts with the mutual respect. And the, the foundation of that is I respect you as a human being. And uh, then we can build on top of that. So I think it's just very important for people to be able to have these conversations because I mean, we're all different and we're always going to be different in many different ways, even other than race, you know, social economic level, um, you know, gender and, and other things as well. And we need to be able to understand each other and understand, you know, where we come, each other's coming from. So you know, conversations are certainly a, a very important thing to have. And unfortunately, the discourse uh, that you see 
on Twitter and on Facebook isn't really from a loving place in many uh, occasions. You know, it's just very adversarial and it doesn't need to be that way. But again, it all starts with us being inclusive and respecting each other first and foremost as humans. And then you can kind of go from there. Right. That's because my two cents of it. A lot of people don't understand everyone's experiences and mm -hmm. point of view. So starting with a conversation is definitely a good place to start. Um, and also that's what Denise, or I should say Tamika had said, uh, she agreed with you. She said, we all have to have an open mind and want to hear the other side without hate for this to move forward. Uh, I asked this question on my Facebook page the other day about what questions you have for our community leaders. And a lot of people wanted to know about the curfew and why protesters are allowed to occupy roads, uh, including interstates. Um, and so we're getting some of those questions as well. Chris Hyatt wanted to know about blocking the roads. And then Spencer Jewell says uh, she has one for Mayor Vaughn. What's being done to help eliminate our curfew? She says, I understand it's bad after dark, but we as citizens want to enjoy being out after 8 p.m. Um, and then for Mark Walker, she wants to know what's Congress doing about this huge issue we're having in our country? We need a change. Let's start a discussion at the federal level as well. And Denise just has a question I think that many of us are wondering right now. When is this going to stop? Uh, we are Americans. Why can't we just get along? So uh, there are a lot of great questions. And trust me, I'm going to ask uh, as many of these as I can. Some of them have already been voiced on my Facebook page, which is great. That conversation on my page, I have to say, has been really respectful and courteous to each other's shared opinions and ideals. And I appreciate that because I view my page as a safe place uh, for us to not only just share how we're doing for the day, but to really engage in important conversations like this. And I'm very proud of that community on our pages, um, really showing respect for one another. So um, I am definitely leaning on that. If you have any questions that you want me to definitely make sure that I answer, make sure you go to my page because I'm pulling most of them from there. And it's Tracy McCain News too. Um, and then Kathy wants to know why were the protesters allowed to go into the stores to protest? So I'll be asking Chief Brian James about that. So keep weighing in. We appreciate the conversation. It's how we're going to get started. All right, let's check in on a few more headlines this morning. Most of the power is back on in Greensboro after an outage at a substation yesterday. The outage left more than 6,000 people without power and several traffic lights not working. Officials say the issue is because of a substation and power is back on. Next week, Greensboro City Council members will consider a plan to help downtown businesses make repairs after destructive protests last weekend. Many business owners say their insurance plans do not cover damage caused by protests or riots, so the extra money to replace their windows is needed. Greensboro police say more than 100 businesses were damaged or looted uh, the first weekend of protests. Well, speaking of downtown, have you had a chance to visit in the past few days? Boarded up businesses have turned into a living art gallery with pictures of George Floyd and other inspirational messages about the fight for equality. Now, these are just some of the pictures of the murals that are there. More and more are being painted every day. Downtown Greensboro has seen a rise in foot traffic, not only with the protests, but with people coming down to view the art. And we talked to several of the artists uh, over the last few days who said that this was their way of healing. Um, to express their emotions inside into their artwork, which is pretty much why they became artists anyway. Um, but they're taking a national issue and turning it into something beautiful um, they felt was important to do so. Yeah, you know, definitely. You know, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, the, the, the boards have to be up there, and, and I, I get all that. You know, there are a lot of you know, people that, you know, definitely uh, uh, have voiced uh, that. But... You know, it's also in my mind, again, I try to be an eternal optimist to the point of being annoying sometimes, <laughs> but you know, there's always good that can come out of something. You can always try to make the best of a bad situation. And um, I think seeing those murals kind of helps really crystallize um, the, the the real i guess impetus or the point of uh you know this this movement is to you know equality and to have everyone be able to discuss differences 
and respect each other as human beings and kind of come together. And some of those murals definitely are not only uh, moving, but, you know, at a, at a different level, I guess, more basic level, some of them are really well done. I mean, the artists did a really good job on a lot of those. So, you know, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's, human beings are interesting, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so it's, it's, it is, it is something that is definitely, I think, uh, a breath of fresh air. And it's something that people can kind of look at and maybe reflect on, you know, as they look at the, the dichotomy between, you know, the reason why the boards are there and the art that's on the boards right now. Yeah, art definitely makes you stop and think, especially if you view it as, you know, a conversation starter. And I'm really proud of my son's preschool. Obviously, it's been closed since March. Um, but they sent an email out saying that they were uh, contracting a, a muralist to come down to the playground and draw a mural uh, at the playground and that reflects community and everyone and racial unity. And um, I thought that was great because they invited the kids to come down and after the artist out does the outline, the kids can come in and paint it. And, um, you know, I was explaining to my son, you know, that this was happening. And, you know, for him, it's just like a cool thing. You know, I get to paint on the wall. Uh, but for me, you know, I started to tear up a little bit because, you know, never as, you know, a mom planning a family did I think that I would have to have these type of conversations with my son who is four years old. Um, so this is really eye-opening, but I love the way our community, everyone, coming together to make a difference, whether it's painting a mural on a playground or, you know, posting something, um, you know, on social media that really gets people thinking about yeah. change. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that was well said. I mean, that was definitely well said. You know, it's, it, it's definitely, um, I guess, interesting uh, uh, times. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm obviously, you know, I'm not a parent, but I, I can imagine, you know, you, you look at your child and you would hope that the future for them is brighter than the current situation now. And that's not even, you know, even in any other year, you would hope that the future yeah. is better. You know, just like in life, you don't want to stay stagnant. You know, you always want to be pushing for personal growth. We all have problems. We all have issues. We all have dark parts of us that we wish that we could improve on and we have to work to improve on it. And just like we have those issues internally, the nation is made up of people. So mm -hmm. people are flawed. And so we as people need to try to push forward and make a better society. And that should just, that shouldn't stop now with this. It should be like that any other time moving forward, there should always be a discussion is how can we be better? Mm -hmm. You know, how can we, be better people to one another? How can we be better people to the, our loved ones? How can we be better, you know, neighbors, better citizens? How can we be better human beings? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is unfortunate that in some situations, I'm going to editorialize a bit, you know, so these <laughs> are just my views, so make sure I put that out there. <laughs> um, you know, it it is unfortunate that, you know, people are having to have conversations with their children, um, the same conversations now that, you know, my parents had to have with me. And in some cases, my grandparents had to have with, you know, my parents. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, we want to continue to, in my mind, personal growth is important and societal growth is important. We need to always be trying to look at ways that we can love each other better that we can respect each other better and we can just be better. We need to just continue to, to, to push forward. I mean, that's just, again, that's my uh, views. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's just my two cents on that. I'm just a, a big believer in, you know, not being stagnant, Yeah, you know. Very well said. I mean, I'm already standing, but I want to give you an ovation. I mean, it was really well said and put, and you expressed uh, a lot of my concerns as a mom. Um, I'm getting choked up a little bit, so I'm, I'm going to stop because I don't want to do this <clears throat> on live. 
<sighs> Why Facebook? But anyway, um, Taran, we have an important conversation coming up. Uh, if you want to join in on that Zoom call, you definitely earned your way on it. Uh, again, Congressman Mark Walker, Greensboro Mayor Nancy Vaughn, uh, Police Chief Brian James, and we're going to talk to a member of the clergy, Pastor Dion Clark, all this morning. And you'll see an excerpt from that tonight in the evening newscast, and then we'll air both a question and answer uh, tomorrow on the Good Morning Show. All right, let's get to the forecast. Save me here because I'm starting to <laughs> feel a little emotional. <laughs> No, I, I definitely, definitely understand. I think a lot of us have had uh, moments like that, uh, you know, in the past couple of weeks. Uh, Weather-wise, uh, today we'll have uh, the chance of a couple of pop-up showers or storms. The chance of rain in your house today, 20 to 30 percent. High temperatures in the mid-80s. We'll kind of do it all over again for tomorrow. And um, the rain chance goes up from there Wednesday into Thursday. Right now, I have about a 40 to 50 percent chance of uh, showers and storms. But as we get some more data in uh, this morning, I'll probably make some adjustments to that uh, before the noon uh, newscast. As that front moves through, we'll see the good rain chances or the higher rain chances, if you want to think of it like that. And then the rain chances will begin to taper off as we go into the weekend. At least that's the way it looks right now, overall, though, a small break in the humidity, very small break in the humidity today is not going to be refreshing outside, but it won't be quite as uh, quite as muggy before the uh, humidity cranks back up again tomorrow, Wednesday. All right, I want to end with something that Stephen James Hartley said on our Facebook Live. He said, support and shop local. Let's bring back downtown Greensboro. And that's something that we all as a community can do, especially if we live in Greensboro. Um, to help the businesses bounce back from uh, those, uh, I guess it was not last weekend, but I guess two weekends ago. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining us on Facebook Live. We will have more conversations tomorrow. And of course, we look forward to joining you every day on the Good Morning Show. Take care, everybody, and stay safe.